Hey, 20 ones. Before we get into the real unit of trigonometry, what I just want to quickly talk to you about is the history of trigonometry. And why I want to do this is I think it sheds a lot of light on the things that we do in trigonometry and it'll help make things hopefully make more sense for you. Okay. What I want to talk about here is that trigonometry actually didn't begin with triangles at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back in time and I'm going to draw a little person right here. And this little person is looking up at the heavens and they're saying, geez, I wonder how far away that star right there is. And maybe they look over here on the horizon. They say, I wonder how far the star is over there. Well, if you think the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So this star or the sun or whatever they may have been looking at is going to come up and around just like that. And if you notice the direction we just went there, that explains the quadrants. Quadrant one, quadrant two quadrant three, quadrant four. So if you've ever wondered why the quadrants went that way, now you know. So what these people were trying to do was they were looking at this and they thought, of course, that the sun went around us. They had a geocentric view of the world. And so they thought it went around us in a perfect circle. We know it's not quite a circle. We know it's an ellipse, but not bad, given that they only had a stick for technology. And they were fairly certain that it took about 360 degrees, it's 360 days. And guess what? That's where 360 degrees comes from. So if you think about degrees, that's where they came from. So degrees are kind of like imperial measure, like feet and inches. And when we get into grade 12, we're going to use something called radians, which is a better way to measure how far something has moved. But in grade 11, we'll stick with degrees. But you've seen radians in your calculator for sure. So now, again, the goal of this person or this group of people, the Babylonians, was to say how far away is that star or that sun, whatever, you know. Um, and they knew that they couldn't figure out that length there. So they did something really brilliant. They said, let's say that that is one unit away. And we actually use that still today. We call it one astronomical unit, one AU. So they said that is one unit away. Okay. But what they were also playing around with was how high up is that star? And how far over is that star? So now you see we're on the Cartesian plane and I'm gonna label these as X and Y. Well, You've been playing around in grade 10 with everyone's favorite little expression of Sokatoa, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent, right? Sokatoa. Well, where does that come from? Well, sine, sine is actually, we know, is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, sine is y over 1, which is just y. What I want you to know is the meaning of the word sign over the years, it's changed. You know, it's gone through many different languages, but I want you to think the word sign is the height of the star or the sun. Cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be X over one or just X as they've got it set up. So cosine, and again, that word co means it's got something to do with the sign, is what they call the overness of the star. So when you're doing these questions and you're doing Soka Toa, and tangent's got a slightly different meaning, which we'll talk a little bit more in grade 12, what I want you to think about is where this all came from. And I want you to think that sine is the height of the star and cosine was the overness, how far away from me that star was on the horizontal. And so there you go. There's the history of trig. When we get into grade 12, we're going to expand on that a little bit more. And it's actually going to become really, really important to us when we start talking about radians instead of degrees. 
there it is. Quick little history lesson for you. Hope you enjoyed it.